It's time to find out about figurative language. Using figurative language makes your writing more interesting to read. It stimulates the imagination of your readers and can help transform what could be ordinary descriptions into something more unique and fun. Figurative language helps you to put your own personality into your writing. The door to the house was open and swinging back and forth in the wind. Simile. The door to the house was open and swinging back and forth in the wind as if the house was breathing. You shouldn't be afraid of Mr. Phillips. He's not as scary as he seems. Metaphor. You shouldn't be afraid of Mr. Phillips. He's a big teddy bear, really. Sand got everywhere. Personification. Sand got everywhere, even hiding in between my toes. It was no good waiting. I had to go back inside and listen to Mum's anger. Idiom. It was no good waiting. I had to go and face the music. I've told you so many times to brush your teeth. Hyperbole. I've told you a million times to brush your teeth. Thomas jumped into the lake. Alliteration. Thomas jumped into the cool, crystal clear lake. The rain fell onto the umbrella. Onomatopoeia. The rain pitter-pattered onto the umbrella. Similes. A simile compares one thing to another thing, often using the words like or as. Dr. Evil had a face like a bulldog. The leaves crunched beneath her feet as if she was walking on cornflakes. My teacher's finger pointed at me like a pistol. Victor dived like a panther. Metaphors A metaphor is like a simile, except that it compares two things by saying that one thing is something else. It doesn't use the words like or as. Under the table, the dog was a vacuum cleaner, devouring the crumbs. Haruka looked up and saw a tornado of fish. The tortoise was a tank, crashing through the jungle. The boat was a snake, meandering through the water. Idioms. An idiom is a well-known phrase that has a figurative meaning that is different from the phrase's literal meaning. For example... If you hear somebody say, it was raining cats and dogs, it doesn't really mean there were cats and dogs falling from the sky. It means it's raining very hard. Solving the Rubik's Cube is a piece of cake for me now. This means it's very easy for me now. Frank decided it was time to hit the hay. This means it's time to sleep. Michael and Jude are like two peas in a pod. This means they are similar to each other. 
They decided it was time to tie the knot. This means it's time to get married. Hyperboles. A hyperbole is a phrase which uses exaggeration to make a point. My teacher, Mr. Grouch, can hear a pin drop from a mile away. This doesn't mean that he's got superhuman hearing. It's just exaggerating the point that he's strict and doesn't like noise. We were scared to death when we watched that film. We've made a mountain of money today. When Emma saw the gift, she had a smile a mile wide. Alliteration. Alliteration involves using two or more words with the same starting sound. This helps to create a pleasant rhythm and sound when the words are read. The greedy goat gobbled up the green grass. Cumulus clouds collected on the horizon. The flag fluttered at the top of the flagpole. David's thoughts drifted dreamily back to the days of his childhood. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is when an author creates a sound for the reader by using a word which makes the required sound when read. The tap dripped all night, keeping me awake. Tiddles purred happily in her new home. A loud thumping suddenly interrupted the silence. The sausages sizzled and hissed on the barbecue. Personification. Personification is when you make non-human things seem human. Dark, angry clouds grumbled above us. The moon peeked out from behind the clouds. James woke up to the sound of his alarm clock yelling at him to get up. Tony's car eventually decided that it had travelled far enough. In summary, figurative language helps make your writing more interesting to read. Figurative language includes personification. Alliteration, hyperbole, idioms, onomatopoeia, similes, and metaphors.